hello uh just uh, we're very sorry for starting a bit late uh thank you for joining our webinar and let's get started hi everyone and welcome to our webinar using aws bedrock and langchain for private llm dev my name is yukti devedi and i'll be your moderator today one of my main jobs here at single store is to organize weekly ai webinars we organize two or three webinars per week we demonstrate different data and ai use cases different tools and technologies whatever is in demand and whatever is requested by you guys so i also post about our upcoming webinars every week so if any of these topics are interesting to you please rsvp right now and you can stay connected with me to stay on top of the loop we'll also love to hear your feedback or ideas on topics that uh, you would like to see in future sessions so please feel free to connect and drop a message uh, on me or anyone else uh, on linkedin uh, you can also reach out to akmal uh, who's our speaker today so uh, as you can see on your screen speaking of future sessions we've got amazing informative sessions that are coming up this week we uh, tomorrow we have unfreeze your iceberg data for real time ai uh, i'll talk about this in a minute and the, for this particular web uh, product launch we have two uh, variants uh, we also have this uh, in the apac time zone for anyone who's uh, located in asia so please feel free to register during this time as well if that suits you better and on july the 2nd we have how to build full stack ai app with versel nextjs and single store so if any of these topics are interesting to you rsvp right now and i will see you all there so what i mentioned earlier about our product launch uh, just a bit more about uh, the second event uh, our engineering and product team recently surveyed our fortune 1000 customers and determined that over 90% of new gen ai initiatives ended up being either either a too hard b too slow or either it's sleek c too costly because of the vast majority of enterprise data is stuck or structured in such a way that the hype around vectors is not exactly working for their current organization so please come and join us tomorrow which is june 26 our engineering team is launching new product features that will enable companies to build enterprise grade gen ai apps on iceberg like data think data on snowflake data breaks azure data lake that can actually get milliseconds of response time sign up right now uh, the link is available on your screen to thaw your data and join the real time ai revolution coming back to today's topic you are welcome to participate in the discussion throughout the session using the zoom q&a button which is at the bottom of your console uh, we have an internal mission statement to try to answer uh, 100% of the audience questions even if that means following up with folks afterwards via email uh, we are absolutely up to the challenge so just ask away no matter what your question is just make sure that you've logged into zoom with your email address and your actual name because we will not be taking up any anonymous questions so uh announcing today's wrap will we like you guys to have a dynamic experience during this webinar so please feel free to try single store notebooks anyone who tries it today will be entered for a chance to win either branded new airpods pro or meta's new ray-ban llm smart glasses it's absolutely the winner's choice simply click the link that's present on your screen i will be putting everything in the chat as well and log in you may know that single store has had a free trial offer for many years but in the past few weeks we have also announced a free share, share deal which we'll talk about a bit later today uh, you may have noticed that we have an auto rsvp uh, feature uh, or present on our landing pages these days so if you visit any of our landing pages there's a check box to auto register which will add future upcoming zooms automatically to your calendar which obviously you don't need to join each webinar live but this is just an option for those who have requested to automatically receive video recordings and github links or any resources that are relevant for the session so moving on allow me to introduce, uh, introduce today's amazing speaker we have the real database expert joining us today uh, we have akmal choudhary who is a subject matter expert when it comes to data and ai uh, and different use cases and is a very regular speaker here at our uh, uh, webinars and we are very happy to have you here akmal thank you the floor is now yours oh, great well thank you uh, see and again uh, apologies for the slightly uh, delayed start there um so let's uh say a few things about single store okay so that's what we'll uh, start off with in terms of the company and uh it's just one slide which is, provides a nice overview of the product as well okay so here you can see background well go back in time all the way to 2011 there and as you can see founded as memsql okay 
So originally the product and the company were called MemSQL, focused very much around in-memory processing for OLTP and hence, uh, um, you know, keeping things in memory. Uh, I mean, that alone doesn't provide necessarily all the acceleration you need, but with clever techniques that the product was able to achieve, uh, you know, some significant milestones and really super fast performance. Uh, over time, you know, there was a requirement by many customers for analytics. And so columnar support was added. And, um, you know, if you're running these operations, some min, max, average count on large quantities of data, uh, and maybe the data don't quite fit in memory any longer, you know, because you you stored it on disks and uh, maybe you want to page in what you need, uh, then it becomes uh, much more challenging. And so with the advent of the uh, columnar storage, I mean, it doesn't make sense to call yourself MemSQL anymore. So change in name to single store a few years ago. There we go. If you're sharp eyed, you can see it rebranded to single store in 2020. So it took a little bit of time, as you can see, about nine years or so to, to get there. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we've had some significant milestones along the way, along the way. All right. So say a little bit about the revenue is always important to business people. So we are now a U.S. Uh, $100 million plus annual recurring revenue, ARR. And you can see that the revenue has started to climb fairly significantly there sometime between 2017 and 2018 there. And then in terms of customers, a uh, slight lag there in terms of behind the uh, revenue, but roughly mid 2019, the number of customers started to uh, climb significantly there as well. So we do have over 350 uh, global customers. And along the bottom there, you can see uh, some of our investors. Okay, let me just try and highlight that for you. And in fact, some of these investors are actually our customers as well. So it's a bit like that advertisement uh, for Remington Shavers, I think it was, you know, the, the gentleman used the shaver, he liked it so much, he bought the company. Uh, and so with our investors, some of them liked the product so much, they actually invested in us. So uh, there we go. All right, then. And then just say a little bit about the product then, okay? So I mentioned this already, that we now provide this capability to do both OLTP, okay, and OLAP through this uh, universal storage, as it's called. And we have a variety of ways that we can get the data in. And uh, keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list. This is simply some examples, okay? And we've demonstrated these in a number of previous webinars. So. If you've attended regularly, you know that I've demonstrated Kafka for you, for example. Uh, we've looked at Spark as well, uh, working on transformations, machine learning, for example. And we can consume from other sources as well. So you already mentioned the iceberg, so we probably need to add a new uh, icon down here somewhere. But uh, that's S3 and Hadoop HDFS, for example. Uh, and the animation here shows this uh, <clears throat> concept of pipelines. So the ability to ingest data from these sources at scale in parallel and uh, be able to uh, store that in the database system for further processing. And uh, you could even transition data. So in the sense that if you really want to do just uh, real-time processing, perhaps you don't need to keep the data, but you want to have these kind of series of events that are arriving and you want to process them somehow, and then maybe just discard them, that's possible too, okay? It's entirely up to you. Uh, we run on the three major cloud platforms in the Western world. So that's uh, AWS, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure. And today I will be using uh, AWS, and you'll see why in a few moments. Uh, we can run on-prem too, and we have customers doing that. There is a Docker container as well, okay, which is available through our GitHub repo. The other thing to note is that um, in the single store portal, uh, which I'll show you momentarily, uh, if you sign up and you haven't done so previously, there is the opportunity to actually grab yourself a license, which will allow you to install single store, a full version of the product, but limited to just four nodes 
anywhere you want. Okay, so you can install that on prem in your own cloud environment, wherever. Uh, and that's very useful. We have some customers actually running it that way too. I think the quickest and easiest way though is to sign up and Yukti will share the links in the chat with you. I'll show you a, um, a couple of resources momentarily as well. And that is really the fastest way to get up to speed on the product uh, because there's nothing to install. As long as you have a browser and you have an internet connection, I mean, you can do stuff. And the product itself, multi-model. So by nature, relational technology is where it started, but we have support for geospatial uh, time series. And again, we've covered these in past webinars, full text search, okay, through the Lucene full text search engine. And if you attend the uh, launch event that Yukti mentioned, that's taking place tomorrow uh, for uh, EMEA and Americas, and then the day after a much more suitable time zone for APAC, then you'll see that we, we there's some news about uh, uh, Lucene. It's getting a bump and uh, it's uh, going to be some improvements there as well. Uh, vectors amongst many other things. So we'll be utilizing that capability today in the product. One important point to note though, is the product has had vector support actually since 2017. So I know it's a popular topic today, uh, you know, RAG, uh, LLMs and so on. Uh, but, you know, we are a company that has that has had that support since 2017. Originally, I think it was a financial customer requested that capability. It's got much better this year. And again, for the product launch this week, more great announcements coming up related to that. So stay tuned. Uh, lots more we could say on this, but uh, uh, time moves on and uh, we should uh, try to wrap up here. So again, real-time decisions, AI apps, dynamic experiences, uh, you can use it for ML. We do a lot of that. Uh, I'm currently working on uh, some workshop material and some other content as well. Again, just utilizing machine learning and AI and ad hoc query support is available in the product, in the cloud, the you can easily integrate your favorite dashboards. There's JDBC, ODBC support. Uh, I use MetaBase, as I often say, simply because the free version is just a JAR file. As long as you've got Java in your environment, in a couple of minutes, you can be connected to the product, creating pie charts, bar graphs, and so on. Very, very easy. So there we go. So as you can see, uh, it, it is, yes, a database management system at its heart, but it's much more now in terms of being a platform. Um, and we are going to utilize one of the newer capabilities today, which is the support for Jupyter Notebooks. So that's what I'll be using to demo. Okay, so uh, important point here. So we sometimes get asked this question, and it, it's a very popular one, that people are very concerned. They like this AI stuff, you know, may have great potential in terms of being usable for some business problems that they have, but there are concerns around things like privacy and security, so on. I mean, that's natural. The, you know, these things happen. Uh, I've seen, and I've been around long enough that I've seen, you know, many new technologies come, sometimes stay around, sometimes not stay around and go fairly quickly. Uh, but often these things uh, tend to worry us because whenever something new arrives, there is always some uh, dilemma in terms of, you know, should I adopt it now and, you know, see how things go or should I wait? And, you know, there are concerns that I have. And so these are natural things. I mean, these are business decisions, which are sometimes very difficult and you have to balance the, the pros and cons of these out. But I think what's happening now is that many of these concerns are being addressed. And so one of the things that you can do, for example, certainly as far as single store is concerned and the AWS platform is concerned, is that there is very good integration uh, between single store and a wide range of AWS services, okay? And the other thing, and let me just switch my tab for just a moment, okay? And we'll come back to the slide deck, is that the product is actually available in the AWS marketplace as well, okay? So that's worth exploring if you have time. Okay, so there we go, down at the bottom here. Let me just go back. 
the slides. Um, and so here, uh, if you are already a large user of a AWS products and services, then making use of single store within that environment um, is really a breeze. It is very, very straightforward in terms of the many of the integrations that are available. And again, this is uh, just uh, some of the key technologies that you may be utilizing. And uh, obviously we can't show absolutely everything here. So, uh, but one sort of key point here and an element that uh, again, goes back to the discussion point a few moments ago in terms of, uh, you know, having some control over your environment is this ability to create, you know, this sort of private connectivity through VPC, um, private clouds, private link. Uh, and these can provide, I think, a great deal of confidence and security and protection, uh, much more so than you might if you were use, utilizing things just to plainly on the internet. Um, and as you know, many of these LLM providers, currently they are located you'd serve a farm somewhere, you connect to their APIs across the net, you are utilizing their services, sending, they are sending you some results back. Uh, and we are seeing now some of these being offered in these environments where they are offering this kind of private link capability. So you're not going across the public internet. Um, and today I'm going to be using Amazon Bedrock. And again, we'll show you a little bit about on that and a couple of the, uh, um, sort of models that they have available. I, I, there's a wide range to choose from, but I'm going to use just two. Okay, one for text embeddings and one for chat. But I think this is something that we're seeing now. Uh, again, if you are concerned about this, I think check with your cloud provider, check what provision they've made, what services they offer to give you greater confidence. And, and certainly I think you'll find that the three major vendors have these private link private cloud capabilities, something that will give you a lot more confidence uh, in utilizing this technology, particularly, I think, if you are if you are very concerned about this or you are dealing with sensitive data and you, you wish to have greater control of that. So that's definitely a plus. Now, um, one other small point here. Uh, one other alternative uh, to all of this is to actually run your LLMs and uh, the embeddings within your own environment. And single store, as I've mentioned in previous webinars, is looking at offering this capability. Uh, it just so happens I've hacked together something which I'm not going to release to the to the world simply because it's better that we wait for an official offering. But it's fairly easy, I would say, to run something like Olama, for example, within our cloud environment and then utilizing a set of uh, predefined models, you just download them and run them. And that is entirely within my cloud space, okay? I'm not going externally anywhere else uh, to, to send my data anywhere else. It remains within my environment. And that's a very nice feature. Uh, and so, you know, please wait for official support for that. Hopefully that will come very soon, but that's uh, another possibility, okay? Something to think about if you are again concerned about this, okay. So now uh, let's look at the kind of general concepts around building a custom generative AI application. So typically there's a couple of steps, a couple of decision points that you have to make, you know, choose LLMs to work within your network, choose a vector data strategy, and then this retrieval augmented generation uh, rag. And so let's look at a couple of these things. So run LLMs privately. So as I said before, I think this is the way to go. You know, create some kind of private subnet. Um, you may find that there is uh, your cloud provider has some kind of arrangement with some commercial LLM providers. And in the case of Bedrock, for example, you have access to a set of models that AWS has an agreement with to be able to offer to you. Okay. Uh, equally, there may be some open source uh, options available as well. And I'll show you the uh, uh, Bedrock um lending page in just a couple of minutes okay so we can certainly make use of these uh directly and again there's a wide range of models to choose from i mean here is just uh, listing a couple of examples okay and then utilizing a database management system there are plenty of 
vector databases to choose from more by the minute. Uh, you know, it, it's slightly difficult in terms of picking a product. Uh, generally, database systems, and I've been working in database technology for a long time, it's come to the point now where there's just like a commodity. You just can pick one off the shelf. And the key differentiator, which I hope you're able to see as far as single store is concerned, is that it does far more. Um, it's got a wide range of capabilities built in. Great for you if you're a developer, because now you just have to learn a single product. Great for you if you are a business person, simply because you improve your return on investment, lower your total cost of ownership, uh, again, because of a single product. And we are very competitive as well. And uh, so we can store the vectors. Okay, single store can handle that for you. In the past, it used to be using a, a blob type. Subsequently, there is a vector type now, and as well as things like ANN indexing. Uh, and since the early days, the product has provided a couple of uh, mechanisms. So dot product and Euclidean distance, these are the two distance metrics that are kind of built in. Cosine similarity, very easy to code. I've written articles on that, uh, you know, showing uh, just a bit of SQL code that you can use to do that. And then if there's anything more exotic that you want, uh, and the, obviously the product doesn't support, you can very, very easily write it yourself, okay, through WebAssembly. Uh, take some C, C++, Rust code, whatever, um, you know, package that up, load that into the database system, and the database will treat that as a UDF. And so if you've got something particular that you want to use and it doesn't, it's not supported by uh, our product, you can very easily write that yourself and use that with the database engine. Okay, and then currently, uh, I think this is slightly out of date now, but by default, we use 32-bit floating point to store these uh, vectors, but you, you can adjust that and you can customize that. Uh, but I think that's a good balance to achieve. And then the last point here is just really putting everything together. And so the example that we're going to look at today is actually something very kindly provided by AWS. So they actually gave us the notebook uh, and they implemented the code for us. And so you'll see that we'll be taking a set of uh, documents. Okay. I mean, it's actually a series. I think it's four PDF documents, which are statements uh, from uh, um, shareholder meetings from AWS. We are going to divide these up into smaller sort of parts, if you like, sentences, paragraphs. We'll take those chunks, uh, create vectors from them, store the vectors and the text inside a uh, single store. And then once we've done that, we can run these operations over them, things like Euclidean distance, dot product, and so on. Um, Langchain support has been in the product for a little while now, and it's actually better. And the other thing that uh, you, you do have some control as well in terms of distance strategy, for example. So the, the example I'm gonna show you today is the bare minimum, but there's a lot of options. Again, check the Langchain documentation and it will give you, uh, you know, further details than the uh, vast range of options available. So once we've done this, then it becomes interesting because we can ask questions of the data. So now we've got these documents stored. And incidentally, although I'm using PDF today, uh, that could be other things. So if you use something like the unstructured library, for example, and by the way, we have uh, something coming up with unstructured in a couple of weeks time where we'll be looking at other types of data to store, not just PDF, right? So things like Excel spreadsheets, for example, or PowerPoint slides uh, and, and so on. You know, there's lots of other things that you might want to uh, store and query and we can do that, okay? Um, ask questions of the data and we get back sort of relevance. You know, there's a score that's calculated depending on the, the distance metric that you're using. And then you can use that data, the answers that have been returned as input to the LLM. Give it more context. And then you can pose a question to the LLM. Now it's got additional information that it didn't know before, and it can use that to answer your questions um, in, in a better way. And so this is really what this uh, um, graphic on the right-hand side is showing. You know, the ability to use 
the LLM to pose these uh, sort of questions, you know, from the user, ask the questions, get these answers back, utilizing what we've stored in the database, in addition to what it knows as well, okay? So we find these match documents, we uh, are able to provide these to the large language model and give it additional context. And that's really where the magic happens, okay? So this is why it looks pretty awesome. Uh, but if you think about it, uh, the, this flow is pretty well defined. It's well understood now. Um, and lots of people are making use of this, trying to find business use cases for it as well. And uh, I think this is where, really where the effort is. Because as far as I can see, the tools are getting much better. The cost of using these commercial LLMs is really going down significantly. So now you have, you're literally just paying pennies. Um, and if you're interested, I mean, the example that I'll show you today in terms of the notebook that I'm going to run, uh, I'm going to get a bill from AWS. I've, I've done this uh, notebook before, and it's like about, I don't know, three pence, three UK pence. I don't know what that is in US cents, you know, maybe about six cents or something like that. But it's because I've had to run it a couple of times. Okay, I mean, I just want to check stuff is actually working. Um, and that is typically the sort of fee, um, you know, very, very small amounts. Okay, so let's move on to the demo. Uh, before we do that, so Yukti will have shared the link for you in terms of uh, signing up and being entered for that draw uh, for the glasses um, and or your, you know, if you go for the AirPods, your choice. So this is the landing page. So literally, I mean, you can sign up with uh, Google or Microsoft, or you do it the old fashioned way with uh, your first name, last name, and email address. And once you've done that, you'll arrive at something like this, okay? So this is currently, I am using the new UI. Uh, it, it's If you see something slightly different, don't worry, okay? I mean, I think they will, I mean, certainly you can see here that uh, there is this user settings that you can change things if you wish to do so. Um, so if you want to run the notebook that I'm going to show you, you will need some compute resources. And uh, that's a must. And the way to do that is essentially, if you just go here to the left-hand side, you can see this thing called deployments. Okay, let me just highlight that for you. There we go. And so if we click this, you can see here that uh, in this environment, um, currently it's pointing to some compute resources down at the bottom. It's just though that I'm sharing this environment with other colleagues. Uh, but if I look at the top here, okay, you can see that uh, with this, I have this option to say new deployment, which you let me select this. And here is where you get these two key options here. So the first one is the starter workspace that Yukti mentioned. This is far and away the simplest way to get started. Uh, and the notebook that I'm gonna show you will work with this starter workspace. Sometimes you do need the standard workspace because it requires more resources or there are other features uh, that it requires, but the vast majority of the notebooks that we have will work with the starter workspace. So you can choose down here your workspace name. I'll take the default there, starter workspace nine. Absolutely fine. Just below, as you can see, currently there is only uh, on the cloud provider. We only have uh, AWS as the uh, option right now. That may well change in the near future. And then currently your region is uh, limited as well to one currently. That is US East 1, North Virginia. Uh, and then last but not least, the database name. So it's filled in a default here, as you can see. I can change that as well, but that's fine. Let me take the default. And then all I need to do here, go to the right here, create workspace. Okay, let me click this. And there we go. It's available straight away, almost instantaneous. Okay, so there are the compute resources. Okay, there's the database as well. I don't need to create that, it comes as part of this. And then here you can see under connect, 
if I click this, you've got options to connect to a variety of two CLI client, SQL IDE, for example, your app. And let me just click one of these just to show you. All right, now the first time you run it, it's gonna ask you, well, you need to create a user. And again, I'll just take the default there. So that's fine. And here, password, it's okay. I realize you can see it, no worries. <laughs> that, that's gonna get deleted very shortly. So I'll just say create user. Um, and then here you can see it gives you some details uh, in terms of the host, that long string there you can see. You've got the port number and your username. First time you run this, it will show you your password. Subsequently, it will hide that for you. And then what's the current database that you have? And again, along the top, you can see that you've got a variety of options. So if you want to connect to a business intelligence tool, for example, again, it gives you details. Now, one important point, um, in the shared environment, because it is shared, you will need to grab yourself this uh, SSL certificate, okay, which is available here for download, this PEM file, and you'll need that to be able to connect, okay? And then here you can see it gives you the uh, command. If you want to use something like a MySQL CLI tool, it gives you the entire string there in, in terms of how to connect with it, minus the details of the PEM file, which you'll have to download and add that there, okay? So... All right, and then if just show you the other options, let me just select new deployment again. And this time I'll go for standard. Okay, and then here again, I'll just take the default name here for the uh, for the group name. And then you can see you've got much more choice in terms of the three cloud providers, AWS, GCP, Azure, and obviously your regions, much greater choice. So probably for myself, something physically closer, Europe West 2. Uh, a couple of these options you might see there, you may, they are unique to me and the environment that I'm running. That's okay. I'll just keep those. And then you just say next. Okay. And here you have the opportunity to really configure the environment. So by default, what this gives you is something called S00, which is two virtual CPUs, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and you can change that through here, okay? So you can choose something larger if you need, depending on your processing needs. And this goes all the way up to, uh, let me just move these zoom controls, S384, that's 3,072 virtual CPUs, 24 terabytes of RAM. Uh, you can see those are ghosted out. I think you need special access to those if you are a customer that really needs that much uh, processing power and memory. But there we go. Okay, so I I'll go back. Okay, we don't need to do that. Just uh, leave that. But uh, just to show you how to get started, and that's the key way. Now, um, in terms of the, the notebook that I'm using, Yukti will share the link with you. It's available on Spaces uh, Stroke Gallery. And uh, again, if you take a look at the um left hand side here okay from the deployment okay so if i take a look at this uh we've currently got uh, something set up below in terms of compute and database that's fine okay make sure you make a note of that if you're going to run multiple versions of this and then all we need to do here is from the left hand side you see there's uh, develop and under that is develop again so just click on this and you've got some options here. Okay, so there is a SQL editor. Um, if you want to create Jupyter Notebooks, you've got some choices here, either a new one or import from file. Or you can see here that one option here is gallery. Okay, so if you click on this, there's a whole range of notebooks here for different tasks. So if you want to work with MongoDB Atlas, for example, and single stock high, there's a, there's a notebook for that. Or if you want to back up your database to Amazon S3, there's a notebook for that. And one of the notebooks in here, which I think is a little bit further down, I'll see if I can spot it. Uh, let's have a look. Let's take a look here. Um, if I can't, this, for the sake of time, I may just, uh, there we go. It's over here. 
retrieval augmented question and answering with Amazon Bedrock. Okay, so just click on that. And when you click on that, this is what it will launch. It will give you this notebook. Uh, check that you are connected at the top to your compute resources. Okay. And uh, in this particular case, uh, I've got a workspace and uh, a database that uh, is already configured. Um, and this is essentially it. So let's just work through this, okay? So this, as I said before, very kindly provided by AWS. And so what they do is they provide a very detailed explanation, much more so than, than, than I did during the presentation about the benefits of using RAG and the, the mechanisms that we can use. Here, the diagram you can see is very similar to what I showed you. We take our documents, we split them up into suitable sizes, we store the embeddings and the original text in the vector database, okay? And we are using, in this particular case, uh, Amazon Bedrock's Titan embeddings to generate the embeddings. And we are using Claude as the large language model for chat. And where you can access this, okay, is through Bedrock. So let me just show you this here, okay? So this is the uh, AWS uh, 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 account. Uh, I signed up for AWS years ago. And again, just search for Bedrock. And Bedrock here show you these are the base models that are currently available. And there's quite a few of them, as you can see. And then Amazon itself has something here called Titan Embeddings G1 text, okay, for which I've been granted access. I had to apply for access to that. And that is useful for embedding, as you can see. So that is one of the uh, core models that I'm using. And then if we scroll down a little bit further here, we can see that under this section, okay, Anthropic, uh, I'm going to be using Claude. And again, I requested access to this, access granted, and this is going to be for text here. Okay. So it's important to note that you can choose and, you know, however many or however many, however few you want, you can uh, you can request access. You have to agree to the terms of the access, and you can see there's a fair bit of choice here: Mistral, uh, Meta, Stability AI, and so on. Cohere. There's lots of possibilities here. Uh, one word of advice that I would say is that it's important to check that you're not being billed for these services if you're not using them. So earlier today, I tried to run the notebook, and I was actually getting errors. And then I realized what I'd done. So because I hadn't used it in a while, what I'd done is come into my Bedrock account and disabled access to some of these uh, uh, commercial LLMs, although the Titan was still okay. Uh, Amazon was not charging me anything for that. Uh, but it's important to keep an eye on costs, you know, know what services that you've enabled. And uh, that is you know, something that will allow you to keep, uh, keep on top of this. Okay. So Bedrock Titan, okay, that's from AWS. That's got what we're going to use for the embeddings. And then subsequently, we'll use the uh, Claude to help us in terms of the chat. So this is a slightly uh, larger diagram. You can see, again, very similar to what I showed you in the uh, slide deck for the question and answer. Um, and we'll take a look at this momentarily, all right? Okay, so lots of information there. Again, because of lack of time, and uh, let me stay conscious of time, 6, 6.40 already, my time. So let's run through this, okay? So I am connected to my workspace. I have a database here as well that I'm going to use. And then the first thing to do here is just uh, some uh, libraries. You can see, and let's just do that. Okay, so that's done. Now, um, one of the nice things that uh, Single Store also now provides is this ability to store your secrets. Uh, and by that, I mean like, you know, access keys. And so that's something that's available. Let me see if I can find that for you. Just quickly uh, go back to develop. Uh, just go to the top here. Uh, there we go, here, okay? So I've taken the opportunity to actually put my AWX access key and my secret access key here. And this is what it's picking up. 
here. So in the notebook that you'll see, you've got this code here. I've just commented that out and I've just modified it ever so slightly to take account of the fact that I now have stored these within the, uh, the cloud environment. Uh, I, I need to provide the region, otherwise it, it, it will complain. And then my access uh, key and the key ID, if we run this, there we go, that's done. A couple of imports here, let's take a look at that. And then just a bit of a helper function here to control the text output. Okay, we just run this. Okay. And here then, this is the stuff in terms of connecting to bedrock. Okay. Which we do. We set up lang changes below here as well. Okay. We are giving it a bit of information here that we are going to use the uh, Claude uh, for the uh, LLM. Okay. It's, okay. Uh, don't worry about this uh, message just below. Okay. It's just a warning. Okay. And uh, that's fine. Uh, our version of Langchain is pinned. So yes, it's complaining, but it's fine. Uh, we may take the time to uh, update this in the very near future, but otherwise it, it's working absolutely fine. And then the next thing here is that we are downloading some financial statements from AWS itself and then just storing them locally uh, within this uh, cloud environment. So there are four of these shareholder letters from 2019 to 2022. Okay, these are PDF files. And then the next thing we do is just take the opportunity to uh, have a look at these and we remove the last three pages of each one. Um, let me just, I'm trying to be too clever here. The, this one, this is what this minus three does. Why? Because you've got some repetition. So AWS includes a standard letter at the back of the document, which is the same across all of these uh, PDF files. And the thing is, we don't really want that. Uh, it's just repetition. So this is what it's doing. We just remove that from all of these uh, files. Okay. And then finally here, what we're doing is we are using this text splitter to chunk these documents up. And we can take a look and get a little bit of information about these documents. So it says here, the average length is uh, among 25 documents loaded is 4131 characters. Okay, so that's what it's chunked it up to as. And then you can see after the split, we have 151 documents as opposed to the original 25. Average length among 151 documents after split is 699 characters, not very big, but enough to you know divide it up each PDF file into a smaller amount. And then subsequently we get the embeddings for this, okay? And once we do that, essentially you you pretty much know what this is. It's just an array of numbers, just a, a, a representation of what a particular piece of text is. And again, if you're sharp-eyed, you'll see this. Uh, okay, so it's unfortunately my magnifier is not allowing me to to, it's insisting on doing the entire tech, but this thing here, one, five, three, six, okay? That's uh, pretty standard for a lot of these uh, LLMs in terms of the length. Uh, and in case you're wondering, a uh, single store uh, vector type is not limited to a particular length. Uh, you are really only limited by storage. So in theory, I mean, you could store, you know, these vectors of huge sizes if you really want to, but if you're going to work with LLMs, then you know you use the standard sort of definitions of which this is happens to be one. Okay. And then finally, what we're doing then is saying, okay, we have just uh, chunked up these uh, statements from AWS, made them smaller. We have created some embeddings from these. Now let's store both of these in the database system. So we're just using Langchain here to do that. Okay. Let me just. And it says here, it takes a moment or two. Okay, so we can uh, watch the timer here. A couple of seconds going past there. So what this will do is, th this is why it's important that you select your database at the top here. Otherwise, when you try and run this, it will give an error. So it, it needs a database to connect to. After that, 
this table here, which is what's being created called Amazon underscore data is being created for you within that database. And again, I can show you what the contents of that look like. So in this particular case, because we're doing nothing special, okay, so that took, it says 38 seconds to, uh, to achieve that. And then we can start doing useful stuff, just doing some similarity sort of searches. So first query is, how has AWS evolved? Okay, so that's, uh, that's the query. Okay, and then in order to have some meaning to that, we need to convert that query to a vector representation so that we can do these kind of uh, dot product Euclidean distance type uh, operations. Okay, and again, you can see it's uh, now got uh, a vector representation. And then finally, we're able to run this down here. And by default, it will do a dot product unless you tell it otherwise. So here you can see it's returning, um, let's see, was that five or is it four? One, two, three, four, four, my mistake, sorry. Uh, the top four answers. Um, and each one of these has a score. So uh, again, sorry, my magnifier is uh, not playing well there, but here you can see this one is the highest at 194. Then you've got uh, slightly less. Oh, that's uh, identical. The value is identical. Uh, this one is less. That's at 158. And then we've got another one here, 158. So let me see. It actually looks as though it's repeating the same thing here. Yeah, the same bit of text, same bit of content is being returned there. Okay. But it's giving you some details in terms of the metadata data as well. What is the source, the original source that this is coming from? So yes, we've chunked it up, but we've stored some information about where these particular chunks have come from, the original PDF files. All right. Um, there's other things we can do. So we can limit it by particular years. So here, just limit it, filter it by just 2022. So we ignore 2019, 20, and 21. And again, if we run this, okay, yeah, there we go. And I, you know, I think I know why we're getting duplicate answers. It's because uh, there is data already in the table. I ran this earlier today and forgot to clear it out. That is the reason why it, it, it's coming out twice. Uh, um, I should have cleared that out, okay. Penny drops sometimes. <laughs> it's okay. It took me a moment to think, why is it re repeating it? You know, two times. It's because I already ran it. And this operation here, it's not a destructive operation. So what Langchain is doing here, it's ad additive. Okay, it's not replacing what's already there. It's simply taking these values and just appending them to the table that already exists. So that's what's happening. Okay which is good. Okay? I mean, you don't want to lose something that you may already create it, but that's fine. And then subsequently, I mean, there's other things that you can do. You can limit it and filter it further to just say, okay, just find me the two best answers, for example, you know, with the highest uh, score for dot product. And uh, there we go. And so on. And then finally, when you want to do something more meaningful, taking these results that are being uh, returned here and then providing some additional context to the LLM itself, we can do that, this kind of retrieval QA. So here you can see the template. It's providing you with an example of how we could do it. So we're simply saying, all right, take this thing, this data that's been returned from this sort of query that we've ran give this to the LLM and then ask it something more meaningful and uh, give, uh, well, actually in this case, we're asking the same sort of questions, you know, how did AWS evolve, for example? So take all of that and you can see, it takes a moment or two, there we go. And then sometimes it may say, okay, I don't have enough information. In this particular case, what it what the LLM is saying, um, when we've asked it the question, how did AWS evolve? It says, I don't know enough. It says, I don't have enough information to determine how AWS evolved. The text mentions, and then it explains and gives you an explanation of what it has found. Um, and then in order to tell you why it hasn't been able to come up with an answer, uh, it's given you pointers to the relevant documents that it's uh, it's tried to use 
so that you can understand uh, and go away and look at that, you know, kind of human in the loop, if you like, if you want to do it that way, um, and so on. OK, so there are additional examples here as well. Okay, and you can run these uh, uh, for yourself. So why is Amazon successful? That is a great question. <laughs> Uh, and so on. There we go. And again, it says I don't have enough information, but it's saying, well, look, you know, there. It, this is what the snippets mention. I'm going to explain it to you. And then for context, I'm going to point you to the documents that I've used, and then you can go away and have a look at this and so on. Okay. So there's a few more there. And then last but not least, I mean, just clean up at the end. Okay. So that's fairly straightforward okay so in order to use this basically you will need to create uh aws access key id and aws secret access key um from your aws account you can store them in, in this um get secrets let me keep an eye on the time time is good and if we uh let's just take a look um okay so as i said before uh Probably a little bit later today, what I'll do is disable my access to uh, Claude. Uh, I really need to check the uh, documentation a bit more, but I, I think I was concerned previously that it's it's going to continue charging me, uh, even though I'm not using it. Um, you know, it's a service. I've subscribed to it. I may not necessarily use it, but I might still be paying for it. So uh, I think that uh, if you know better, let me know. But I think that was my concern the last time. Uh, Titan embeddings, I think I can't remove, but uh, like I said, you've got lots of choices and options here in order to utilize that. And that is essentially it. So, you know, what we've shown you is a quick way to get started. Uh, create an account. You've got a couple of options there. The free tier is far and away the simplest way to get started. The notebook is available in gallery. Yukti will send you a link to that as well. You do need a little bit of information from AWS. You have to create those uh, resources on there. You will get billed, but it's absolutely tiny amount in terms of the bill. Uh, I, it's almost uh, shame, you know, shameful that I get a bill for like one pence or two pence, something like that. Uh, AWS still, you know, ask to be paid for these services naturally. I mean, that's their model, and I am subscribing to these. Um, but, you know, the the quantity of that I'm charged is absolutely tiny, really. OK, so just to remind you, uh, upcoming events. So please uh, take the time to attend this tomorrow. And if you're in APAC, this one. OK, so there's going to be some cool announcements around Iceberg, Lucene, Vector stuff as well. And uh, let me just move on to this. Uh, just to remind you of this again. And so you'll be able to sign up for this and uh, you will announce the uh, winners momentarily. Okay, and with that, let me stop at that point then. And uh, you see if there's uh, any questions, please. I think we've got a couple yeah. of minutes there before you're going to do the draw. So uh, let's uh, take a look at that then. All right. Thanks, Akul, for the amazing session. Uh, we have a lot of questions that are waiting for you. Uh, yeah. So we have one question from Mogit PN. They say, do we have to create a workspace in order to use the notebook in single stroke for three? Uh, yes, you do. So the workspace is like your compute resources. Uh, I think when we originally started offering notebooks, it was not a requirement. But if you think about it, you do need some compute resources there in order to have something to run on. Um, and if you want to utilize a notebook, you do have to create a workspace. And the quickest and simplest way is to do it using the free tier, which I showed you. I mean, literally, it's almost instantaneous. One second or less, you, you get your workspace, and that is something that you can use with this particular notebook. Uh, we have a question from Sebastian. They are saying that currently our company uses Microsoft SQL Server for our databases. We are interested in exploring single store. Do you? Uh, do we have to completely migrate all our data to single store, or is there a way to connect single store directly to our existing SQL Server database? Okay, that's a great question. So currently, we have a CDC solutions for a couple of technologies for Mongo, and for MySQL. Uh, Postgres is in the works. That will be available soon. 
I think we don't have anything uh, like that currently for SQL Server, although that isn't to preclude third-party solutions that might be able to assist. So that could be one way to do it. Uh, other possibilities are to you know, simply take uh, dumps of the databases themselves in a sort of a, a well-known format. Um, I don't know how large the databases are, but it, it, you know, SQL Server provides the various tools that you can export the data out. And so that might be something that uh, uh, you know, might provide a way to be able to get the data into single store. There could be other you know, specific scripts or tools that we could build for um for that particular use case that's something we can explore and basically just reach out to us okay so team t-e-a-m at singlestore.com and then we can find a technical resource to talk to you and, and then you know find out what your specific requirements are how big the data are and so on and then we we can recommend some appropriate strategies for that uh sebastian i've also sent you the email that is also there uh yeah. in addition to team at singlestore.com so please feel free to check it out and our team will definitely assist you with that uh we have one more question from daniel wong he says thanks for sharing uh what's the price around aws bedrock will single store collaborate with azure in a similar way or if we can diy our own script using azure llm and embedding models. So, uh, and there's a second question to it as well. Does it involve sparse embedding when it comes to hybrid search? It seems like it wasn't showing on the notebook. Right, um, that great questions. Okay, so the first part is absolutely. I mean, this particular example, we focused very much on AWS. Uh, if you are in a Microsoft environment and let's uh, and then Microsoft have a very strong relationship with OpenAI, for example, then absolutely you can use single store with OpenAI. And we've demoed that a, a lot previously. Uh, and again, if you uh, you know have um, particular technologies or subscriptions uh, that you are paying to Microsoft, then that's absolutely fine. I mean, it's just a question of uh, finding the, uh, uh, the 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 appropriate means to be able to store the data, how to connect that. To single store and those are relatively simple i would say uh, things to think about um as far as the hybrid search is concerned that's a great question so in this example you saw that i created the embeddings and i was doing that using titan embeddings from uh, aws and i was storing both the text and the embeddings that, and this is the thing i i, I knew it was something i forgot to show uh, and one of the things that uh, we have, let me see if I can just very quickly show that. And let's get to deployments. Okay. And uh, let me see. Uh, wrong, wrong thing. Develop. There you go. That's where I wanted to be. So here on the left hand side, open SQL editor. And it's currently, I think, what's the database I want? It's, uh, was it TestDB? I think maybe. And let's just say uh, show tables. Uh, if I can type. All right. All right. Let's just run. Uh, and down below here, you can see this thing. It says Amazon underscore data. So let me just show you. Select star from amazon underscore data and then just let, let's limit to one row okay or let's say five okay and let, let's just do that okay and then here you can see the data stored internally and this is uh don't worry about this this is kind of the internal representation it looks horrible unreadable okay but the new vector type will allow you to see that as text so we are storing both the content and the vector and the metadata in the in the in that one table we can also use uh, the full text search with using lucene for example as part of this to build a solution that uses both semantic search and full text search in this particular notebook it's just using the semantic search we are not doing any full text sort of capabilities this time although if you look in gallery there is, I think, at least one notebook that I'm aware of that will show you how to do both and combine them so that you can use both of these technologies together. All right. We have, uh, we, I mean, we are at the top of the hour, but let's just take one more question. 
we have one question from pushkar vani uh, they say uh, aws bedrock also supports images through llm models can this yes. functionality be utilized when working with sing notebooks on single store yes you can absolutely because remember what all it is is that you're using appropriate encoders for different for the different types of data that you want to use whether it's images uh, or voice sound yeah uh mp3 files we've done um webinar previously uh, and and uh pavan was just actually asking me a little bit earlier there's a question about i did something on the clip a while back where we are uh, where we show how to take videos for example break them down frame by frame and then store the data for each frame in single store so as long as there's an appropriate encoder that can represent the information that you have within that particular type of data that you want to store we can store it. And if that's that representation is going to be some kind of vector, all the, all the more easier. OK, that's ab absolutely very easy to do. Um, so if, if those in embeddings, those encoders uh, are available, no problem at all. OK, the, it's just a, a numerical representation of the data. And uh, if you can interpret that somehow, that's fine, too. But the, the database doesn't care. I mean, essentially, you give it that whatever representation you want to store, it will do that for you. All right. Sounds good. So we are at the top of the hour. Thank you so much for attending everyone. Thanks, Akmal. Uh, so uh, apologies in advance that we were not really able to take up all the questions. Thank you so much for the questions as well. And thanks for attending. Our team will reach out to everyone uh, afterwards via email to follow up with everyone with answers to the questions. So... All right, just uh, I think Akmal has already announced about tomorrow's session that we have. Uh, you can just uh, uh, can you go to the previous slide, please? I just will try. Feel, there you, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it's tomorrow. Uh, it's there in both the time zones uh, in APAC and in AM. So feel free to uh, attend it at your convenience, or you can always request for a recording later on. Uh, uh, at uh, for like to for viewing at your convenience and. Uh, I hope to see you all there. And uh, yeah, so the topic that everyone's been waiting for today's raffle winner, it goes to Mr. Emmanuel, who's the senior SWE at FedEx. Congratulations and thanks Thank for you. joining. Congrats. And if that's not you, please don't give up. We are going to announce one more AirPods and Meta Ray-Bans winner by the end of the day. For anyone who has tried out today's demo, sign up at the link that was present there in the chat as well. And it is uh, it was also displayed on the slide. And thanks again, Atmul, for today's presentation and demo. And thank you, everyone, for joining. We really value your time and energy. And I hope to see you all tomorrow for our product launch. And take care, everyone. Good evening. Have a good rest of the day wherever you are. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.